since the D fields are equal in both of the regions, we can write epsilon dielectric times E dielectric total. So the D field in the dielectric is equal to the D field in the air region, which is epsilon air E applied. Then solving for the ratio of E applied over E dielectric, we have to divide by E dielectric and we get E applied over E dielectric total and that's equal to epsilon dielectric over epsilon air. Now epsilon, the permittivity of air is epsilon naught. So then looking at the left side of this equation, we can see that this gives us a ratio of how much the electric field changes inside of the dielectric slab. Uh, it changes due to the dipole rotations. So this gives us a factor of how much the electric field changes. So then looking on the right side, we could define this ratio on the right side as being a number that tells us how much the electric field has changed the ratio that the electric field has changed in the material and that is we're going to and let me be careful about how I write this so it doesn't get too confusing so actually let me do it this way we'll put epsilon naught there so if we can, if this is a ratio of the electric field, how much it changes, we can define the right side as also a value that describes how much the permittivity has changed in the dielectric, and that would be relative to free space. So this is appropriately, appropriately called the relative permittivity. So epsilon r is equal to epsilon dielectric over epsilon naught. So then we can write, let me change this to dielectric, epsilon dielectric is epsilon naught times epsilon r. So the permittivity has units of farads per meter. The epsilon dielectric, epsilon naught also has units of farads per meter and epsilon r is unitless. It's just a factor that describes how much the electric field has reduced inside of the material relative to free space. So then more generally, looking at the constitutive relation, we had epsilon written here, g is equal to epsilon e. Now we can be more specific and write epsilon naught times epsilon r times e. So in free space, epsilon r would just be one. So what do you think? Do you think we need to protect people who may be near the experiment to make sure that the EMP does not interact with their body and with the water molecules in their body? Do we need to prevent the water molecules in the person's body from aligning with the applied electric field of the EMP? Or maybe it doesn't matter if they want to align with the electric field of the EMP.